Hi friends, welcome to Happy Nursing. This is Ila and in my previous video, I discussed about the two uh, policies, Indian University Commission and Secondary Education Commission. In this video, we will discuss about Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan and Midday Meal Program. So let's get started. And before starting, if you like my videos, then please like and share my videos and subscribe my channel. Now start. Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan. The scheme was launched in 2001. Its objective was to achieve universalization of elementary education in the country by making education free and compulsory to the children of 6 to 14 years of age group. Interventions taken to meet this objective are broadly divided into four major categories. X access and retention, uh, providing quality education, equality and infrastructure development. We will discuss the components under these categories in brief. Interventions under access and retention are as follows. First one is ensure school availability within specified area to all children. Opening primary schools in neighborhood areas. Providing teachers, infrastructure and teaching learning equipments in all schools. All education guarantee scheme centers to be converted into regular schools. Allowance of transport cost where residential school cannot be set up, for example in sparsely populated areas. Next are the interventions under providing quality education. First one is to meet teacher requirement in schools. For example, where trained teachers are not available, additional teachers can be employed. To provide uniforms for the students, because uniforms play an important role in maintaining a sense of equality. Curriculum and textbooks prescribed by the state. Content, design and quality of textbooks decided by State Council of Educational Research and Training. Learning enhancement programs to support and initiate reforms in the curriculum. If needed, development of syllabus, textbook, supplementary reading material, etc. Teachers training is provided to upgrade knowledge and skill. Head teacher training to manage school functions and resource person training for education administration. Block resource center, urban resource center and cluster resource center must be strengthened through trainings and providing required resources. Next is teaching learning equipment is to be provided for each class as identified by teachers and school management committee. Teacher grants should be provided on annual basis for pre preparing teaching aids. School grants should be provided to government and government aided schools to replace the equipment which are not working. Research evaluation, monitoring and supervision for private schools. It includes monitoring the rights of children and providing technical resource support for promoting innovation and research. Innovation Fund for Computer Aided Education, which covers maximum upper primary schools. It focuses on science, mathematics, hardware and software training, maintenance and resource support. And the last one is libraries. Setting up of libraries in existing government schools with guidelines for selection of books. Next are the interventions under the category of equality. Setting up of residential schools at upper primary level for girls, especially for SC, ST, OBC and other minority communities. Setting up of Kasturba Gandhi Valika Vidyalaya in educationally backward blocks where the female literacy rate is below national average. Innovation fund for deprived children in urban areas like street children, migrant children, rag pickers, child livers, children affected by migration, children without adult protection, etc. So that they can also join the elementary education. Provision for children with special needs like those who have mental retardation, speech problem or any other physical disability which cause them to develop more slowly than other children. Next are the interventions under infrastructure development. To improve student classroom ratio and to provide space for office and store and specifying one classroom for every teacher. Residential training for teachers to arrange for monthly teachers meeting, separate toilets for boys and girls, Facilities of drinking water in schools, providing furniture to existing government upper primary schools, providing maintenance grants for repairing school buildings. Next is the Midday Meal Scheme. It was formally launched on 21st August 1995. The objective of this scheme was to help improve the effectiveness of primary education by improving the nutritional status of primary school children. Under this scheme, central assistance is provided to states for the following. 100 grams of food grains per child per school per day, alternatively 3 kg per child per month for 10 months. And transport subsidy for transport of food grains from the nearest depot to the school. There are some existing models through which this scheme is implemented. First one is decentralized model. 
Under this model, meals are cooked on site by local cooks and helpers. It employs over 2.5 million cooks or helpers providing them job. But it can cause accidents and poor hygiene if proper infrastructure like kitchen sheds, utensils, etc. are not there. In 2004, 87 children died of an accident when the thatched roof of a classroom was ignited by sparks from a cooking fire. Next is the centralized model. In this model, an external organization cooks and delivers the meal to schools. Here, large school, uh, scale cooking is done through largely automated process. So, maintaining hygiene is easy. But a study on centralized kitchen was conducted in Delhi in 2007, where it was found that even in centralized kitchens, the quality of food is not maintained. The Ministry of Human Resource Development reported that 95% of tested meal samples prepared by NGOs in Delhi did not meet nutritional standards in 2010 to 12. Next is international assistance. This is the assistance provided by different international uh, voluntary and charity organizations. For example, Church World Service has provided milk powder to Delhi and Madras Municipal Corporation. Care has provided corn, soya meal, bulgur wheat and vegetable oils. And UNICEF has provided high protein foods and educational support. The last model is Tithi Bhojan. It is a concept made for public participation under the midday meal program that was first started in Gujarat. People were encouraged to celebrate social events like birth of a child, threading ceremony or housewarming by donating to the midday meal served in the local schools. It can be in the form of sweets or snacks along with regular midday meals or full meals. It can also be done through contributing for cookware, utensils, dinner sets or glasses for drinking water. So this was all about midday meal. Today we have studied Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan and midday meal. In our next class we will discuss about another two policies two or three policies depending upon its length so that you don't get bored okay so if you like this video then please like and share this video and subscribe my channel thank you for watching